touched I do with a trembling soul just turn to a day to Jesus he will receive forgive and make you whole Christ alone can set you free believe on the Lord Jesus Christ believe on the Lord Jesus Christ Test, 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 my dear. Excuse me just a moment. Test, ah, that one works. Test, test, much better. Test, 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 okay. Sorry about that, but now we've got it figured out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. 
I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Take away from us our iniquities, we beseech thee, O Lord, that with pure minds we may be made worthy to enter into the Holy of Holies, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Welcome to our worship here at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherd Community Chapel in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. I am pastor and chaplain, Keith Wise, and it is my privilege to be here with you today to worship, to pray, to praise, and give thanks to the Lord our God. Welcome to all of you who live here at Good Shepherd and are watching on channel 64. Welcome also, good, that's on. Welcome also to all of you watching on Facebook Live. If you are joining us on Facebook or on YouTube, please let us know in the comments that you have joined us. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments and I will respond to you as soon as I can. A few announcements before we begin. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and one of our usual customs here is to include the imposition of ashes during the service, but with all the COVID regulations, that is not, in, that is not possible this year. So the service this Wednesday at 10 o'clock will be televised on channel 64, and it will also be broadcast on Facebook and then available later on YouTube. And instead of the imposition of ashes, we will do a remembrance and thanksgiving for our baptism, which we can all do even if we can't be gathered here together. So please join us for Ash Wednesday, this Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And if you live here at Good Shepherd, if you have not already, you will soon receive one of these. It's a schedule of our Lenten and Easter worship services. And the midweek Lenten series is based on 1 Thessalonians. It's called Holy God, Holy Lent. Holy Lives. And the best part about this schedule, if you've already got one, if you don't, remember to do this, is that on Sunday, April 4th, Easter Sunday, we plan to return to worship here in the chapel. Not all of us all at the same time yet. We plan on a service at 10 for the nursing home a service at 2 for the apartments, and then on Easter Monday at 10 a.m. in the cottages. But beginning Easter Sunday, as long as things stay like they are or continue to improve, we will begin our return to worship in the chapel on Easter Sunday. So keep that plan in your prayers as I am so we can join together 
here in the chapel again for worship. Today we celebrate the divine service and we will commune residents of the nursing home. How that works is when we get to the end of the service of the word, which is marked in your bulletin. If you are not receiving communion today, you certainly may conclude your worship there, but you are also free to continue with us. After that, we will continue with the service of the sacrament. And then when it's time for the distribution, I will leave the chapel. So there will be a time where there's nobody here. That's when I'm out communing folks. And when I'm done, I will return and we will finish with our concluding prayers and hymns. If you're an apartment resident and you would like communion next Sunday, you need to let me know by Thursday at noon. So apartment folks who would like communion, Thursday at noon is the deadline for RSVPing for communion next week. Those are enough announcements for today. Today is Quinquagesima, the Sunday about 50 days from Easter. It is also the commemoration of St. Valentine. So before our sermon, we'll have a brief uh, remembrance and thanksgiving for him. Our theme for today is Sola Fide, Faith Alone. Now I invite you to join me for our prayer before worship. It's printed on the inside front cover of your bulletin. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. As for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of man. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We continue with the invocation on page five of your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our first hymn today is How Firm a Foundation, Lutheran Service Book number 728. If you are singing along from the hymnal, do note we're singing stanzas one through three and five.
cross has leaned for repose. I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That so all hell should endeavor to shake. I'll never, no, never, no, never The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ, have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully hear our prayer, and having set us free from the bonds of our sins, deliver us from every evil. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, cleanse my heart and my lips, almighty God, that I may worthily proclaim your holy word through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for Quinquadesima is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, the third through the seventh verses. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knee. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing. For waters shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks 
thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then Jesus took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge him and kill him. But the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them and they did not know the things which were spoken. Then it happened, as he was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they cried out, so they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. By the gospel word today, may our sin be done away. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn of the day is My Faith Looks Up to Thee, Lutheran Service Book, number 702, stanzas 1, 3, and 4.
Today, February 14th, is the commemoration of St. Valentine, which is more than a hallmark and a chocolate and a romance holiday. It is a church commemoration of a real man, Valentine. So on this day, the church remembers the holy martyr, Valentine. This devotion is from Celebrating the Saints by Reverend William Whedon. The story of the man commemorated this day is in large part unknown. Some centuries after Valentine's death, Pope Gelasius would write that Valentine is among those whose names are justly reverenced among men, but whose acts are known only to God. What is known is that Valentine ended life confessing Christ to the last, dying a martyr's death in Rome under Emperor Claudius II around 270 A.D. The very day that Valentine was to face his martyrdom, he is said to have brought consolation to the daughter of his jailer by writing her a small note of encouragement. The young girl had reportedly come to love this godly man and was grieved at the thought of his death. But Valentine knew that death was a defeated enemy because of Christ's death and resurrection. So he comforted the young lady. Hence, the custom of St. Valentine's Day notes arose, which has spread far and wide. From the relative obscurity of his life, we may learn a valuable lesson. God remembers what people forget. Baptized into Christ, marked with the Holy Cross as the Lord's own, fed with the body and the blood of the Savior, Valentine lived and served, loved and died a witness to the invincible love of God in Christ Jesus. God remembers his saints across the ages, even the multitude of his own who never end up with a commemoration in the church's calendar other than All Saints Day. With God, no one is forgotten. This will be apparent on the last day, when Christ will call the dead to life and remember the deeds of all, crowning his grace in the lives of his own. Among the saints gathered before him that day will be faithful Valentine, whose trust in Christ's promises was not in vain. For your holy martyr, Saint Valentine, all glory be to thee, Lord Jesus Christ. Love in Christ is strong and living, binding faithful hearts in one. Love in Christ is true and giving. May his will in us be done. Love is patient and forbearing, clothed in Christ's humility, gentle, selfless, kind and caring, reaching out in charity. Love in Christ abides forever, Fainting not when ills attend. Love, forgiving and forgiving, shall endure until life's end. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. From Psalm 89, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you establish in the very heavens. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. Amen. Today is Quinquagesima Sunday, the Sunday roughly 50 days from Easter. And today we conclude our Jesima sermon series on the three sola. Over the last two weeks, we've meditated upon and contemplated sola gratia, grace alone, sola scriptura, the scripture alone, and today our focus is sola fide, faith alone. That's what sola fide means, justification or salvation by faith alone. But faith in what? Faith in whom? It really does matter. As you probably already know, for us Christians, when we say faith alone, we mean faith alone in Jesus Christ our Lord. Everybody has faith. We all believe in someone or something. Whatever. You fear, love, and trust the very most. That is your God. Sadly, in today's world, for countless numbers of people, that could be and is almost anything. But for us Christians, as we have already said and will say many more times, our faith alone is in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. Because no matter who you are or where you are or what you believe, no matter what, only Faith in Jesus Christ is saving faith. Hear that again. Only faith in Jesus Christ is saving faith. St. Peter told the Sanhedrin, the sort of ruling Jewish synod of Jerusalem, he told the Sanhedrin, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Faith alone in Jesus. It's faith that saves. It's faith that saves us from sin, from death, 
from the devil and from hell. This sola fide, faith alone, this is the faith our fathers in the faith confessed before God and men often at great peril, putting even their lives, not to mention their livelihoods and their families and everything else in danger. They confessed, and so do we today along with them, that faith alone, sola fide, is the means and instrument through which we lay hold of Christ. So in Christ we lay hold of that righteousness that benefits us before God, for whose sake this faith is credited to us for righteousness. Saving faith is the gift of God and it is the work of God. Jesus says, no one, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. He also says, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. Saving faith is God's gift and it's God's work on you and in you. And this faith alone is the faith that saves you from eternal damnation. It is the faith revealed by the righteousness of God apart from the law. It's the faith St. Paul describes in Romans chapter 3. He says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. That is faith alone that saves you from the fires of hell. And this faith alone also saves you for an eternal life in the indescribable blessings of the kingdom of God. It is the faith God works in us in holy baptism. St. Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, for you are all, all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither
neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And the promise is everlasting life with all who believe in Jesus. That is faith alone that saves you for the promises of God. Sola fide, this faith alone, is the faith alone by which our forefathers were saved by God. God promised Abraham one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And then he brought Abraham outside and said, look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed in the Lord, had faith in the Lord, and God accounted it to him for righteousness. The blessed David confesses that faith alone saves when he prays in Psalm 32, blessed, save, is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, saved, is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. The prophet Habakkuk confesses faith alone when he says the just, those who are right with God, shall live by his faith, sola fide, faith alone that saves is the faith professed by the prophet Isaiah in our Old Testament reading for today. This is the faith that speaks in these words. God gives sola fide words to tell us just what it is we believe. And he gives those words to Isaiah. Listen to them one more time. This is the substance of sola fide, what we believe Jesus has done and will do for us. Strengthen the weak knees and make firm the feeble hands. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong. Do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then, the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing. For water shall burst forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of jackals where each lay, there shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Sola fide believes that God will renew the entire creation, including you and me, through Jesus Christ. This is saving faith. This is the faith alone by which God saves you and me and all his saints. It is the faith displayed by the blind man on the side of the road on the way to Jericho in the gospel. Jesus asks him, 
what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Did you hear what just happened there? The blind man asked to receive his sight. Jesus said, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. The faith alone that saves is faith that receives. It receives God's gift from Christ Jesus. Abraham received God's promise of an heir, and he believed that promise, and God declared him righteous. God saved him by faith. David received God's promise of forgiveness, and by his faith, God put a new song in his mouth by the end of Psalm 32. He says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Habakkuk received God's promise of life for the just by faith alone. And the Spirit revealed that gospel promise of life through faith to St. Paul as sola fide, faith alone. It is the faith about which we speak today that St. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes everyone who has faith for the Jew first and also for the Greek for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written by the prophet Habakkuk the just shall live by faith Isaiah as we heard rejoiced in the promises of this faith as God proclaimed the opening of the eyes of the blind and the blind man on the road to Jericho rejoiced in receiving the fulfillment of that promise from Jesus himself. And Jesus said to him, your faith has made you well. Saving faith is faith that makes you well. It is the faith alone by which God saves you. It is the faith alone that receives every gift God gives through faith in Jesus Christ. That, brothers and sisters, is sola fide. Maybe you are at a point in your life where you need to do a true evaluation of your faith. What do you believe? Think for just a moment about that. What do you believe? really believe down deep in your heart what and whom do you believe in? Do you believe what you confess to believe every time we pray the creed in worship? Do you believe that God the Father made you and still sustains you purely out of his own divine fatherly goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in you whatsoever? Do you believe that? Do you believe 
that Christ redeemed you, that he rescued you from the powers of the devil, from sin, from death, from hell, by his perfect life and by his precious blood poured out on the cross and by his death there. And do you believe that by his resurrection you will be raised up too and he will welcome you into his kingdom to live under him forever in holiness and righteousness and blessedness and innocence? Do you believe that? Do you believe that of your own will you cannot believe any of it? Do you believe that by my own reason or strength I cannot believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord or come to Him, but that the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel enlightened me with his gift, made me holy, and kept me in this one true faith, and he will do so until the great and glorious day of the Lord. Do you believe the Holy Spirit gives, preserves, and keeps you sola fide by faith alone? Do you believe that? Because that's what you confess when we confess the creed. If you cannot answer yes, yes, absolutely, yes, amen, and amen, and so shall it ever be, if you cannot answer with that kind of confident yes to any or all of those questions, your faith is in trouble, and so is your soul. If you cannot honestly, confidently answer yes to those questions, your faith needs some nurturing. Your faith needs some building up. Your faith needs some forgiveness and some grace, and it needs the power of God. And the place to find all of that is at the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. If your faith has weak hands and feeble knees and a fearful heart, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus like the father of that boy in St. Mark's Gospel. That boy who had an evil spirit who made him mute and threw him down onto the ground and seized him up and made him foam at the mouth at who knows when it would happen next. Come like that desperate father. Come with him to Jesus. Come to the cross and pray, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And from the cross, that's exactly what Jesus does. That's why he's on the cross, to help all our unbelief. From the cross, he pours out his blood upon you, and in Jesus' blood is his powerful forgiveness of your unbelief. In his blood is his divine life that comes with saving faith. In Jesus' precious blood is his sacred salvation for all who lay hold of him by faith. In his blood is his power to put faith back 
into your heart and soul as it was there before. In his blood is power to put faith where it has never been before if you have not before believed in Jesus. So come to him today. Maybe your faith just needs a tune-up. Maybe it needs a complete rebuild. Maybe, like the rest of us, you're somewhere in between. But come to the cross. Come without fear. Come without feeble knees. Come without shaking hands. Come to the cross and confess the weakness of your faith. Confess the unsteadiness of your belief. Confess your complete lack of faith to Christ Jesus and pray for him to give you faith. And by his grace and through his death and resurrection and in his holy blood poured upon you, he will renew your faith. He will restore your faith. And if need be, he will rebuild your faith from the bottom of your soul up so you can say, I have been, I am, and I always will be saved by faith alone in my Lord Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus today and be built up in your faith. Because what you believe, what you have faith in, matters. What you believe can be a matter of life and death, eternal life and death. Without sola fide, without faith alone in Christ alone, without faith alone by which God saves you, you are destined for the fires of hell where you will suffer with the devil eternal anguish and torment always dying but never delivered or relieved from your torment and anguish by actual death it will never end but with sola fide with saving faith in Christ Jesus with faith alone that saves your body and your soul with faith in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one and only true God, with faith ordained for you by God the Father, with faith revealed to you and nurtured in you by Christ Jesus and his blessings, with faith formed and fed in you by the Holy Spirit through the word and sacraments with that kind of faith, with that kind of faith that receives, rejoices, and rebels in the renewing and rebuilding of your faith by Jesus, with faith that loves and receives openly all the promises of God with sola fide, faith like that, you are saved. You are saved by faith alone. You are saved from sin, death, the devil, and hell, and you are saved for a blessed life here in this fallen, dying world and an everlasting life in the blessed presence of Jesus Christ our Lord in his coming kingdom. Everybody has faith in something. The question, and perhaps this is the single most important question of our time. The question is, faith in whom? 
faith in what? What do you believe in? For you and me and all the saints of God, for all of us whom God has gifted with sola fide, with faith alone in Christ as our Savior. Our faith, praise God, is faith that saves, the faith that confidently confesses we believe in sola fide, faith alone, we are justified, we are saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Without such faith, you are doomed. But with it, with such faith, by such faith, through such faith, God saves you right here and now for all eternity. And when Christ comes again in glory, he will raise up all of us who hold sola fide, faith alone in him. He will raise us up from the dead and he will welcome you into the new heavens and the new earth. And as you step your first step into his everlasting kingdom, he will say to you, what is said to that blind man on the way to Jericho, and he will say more too. He will say, receive your sight, receive your strength, receive your health, receive your glory, receive your blessing, receive your divine honor, receive your sacred salvation. Come and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Your faith has made you well. Welcome in to the new heavens and the new earth. Welcome to everlasting life. That's what sola fide, faith alone, believes. Because that's the promise Jesus gives. And that's where we place our faith alone. God grant such faith unto us all. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray that God, who has given us exceedingly great and precious promises, would grant us so perfectly and without all doubt to believe and have faith in his Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith in his sight may never waver nor be reproved. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy that our Lord, who kindled the flame of his love in the heart of his holy martyr Valentine, would grant us, his humble servants, a similar charitable love for all people. And through his love in Christ Jesus embody his love in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, those in need, and all who have asked for our prayers, especially Ingrid and her family, Faith and Emily and their family, Boyd and Joanne, Marion, Jen, Roy, Nancy and Don, Russell, Joanne, Sylvia and her family, Bill, Joanne, Pat, Maya, Joanne and her family, Donna and Otto and their family, Jane, Jody, Daryl, Sarah, Karen and Joshua, Joanne, Rich, Tracy, Dan, and Rita, 
all who live, work, and worship at Good Shepherd and Shepherd of Grace, all who are in positions of authority, all who suffer from COVID-19, all health care workers everywhere, all who suffer the effects of natural disasters, all who are oppressed, all who cry out for justice, all Christians, especially those who are persecuted for their faith, and all those for whom we pray from the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our beloved dead, that as he has promised, God would grant them peaceful rest with the saints in light until the last day, and then raise them from the dead and welcome them into the blessedness of the new heavens and the new earth. Especially today, we remember our brother Richard, and that God would comfort all who mourn the death of loved ones with his promise of everlasting life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the saints, we give you thanks, O God, especially for the Blessed Virgin Mary, her faithful spouse and guardian of Jesus, St. Joseph, Silas, Aquila, Priscilla, and Apollo, Valentine, King Solomon, Scholastica, sister of St. Benedict, and Cyril and Methodia, for faith like theirs that in humility and constancy receive God's gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation in Christ Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That Almighty and most merciful God, our Heavenly Father, would hear our confession that as his erring children we justly deserve this chastening for our sins which he has sent upon us in this COVID pandemic and of his boundless goodness grant us true repentance graciously forgive our sins remove from us or lighten our merited punishment and take this plague away from us and that he would strengthen us by his grace that as his obedient children we may be subject to his will and endure our afflictions in patient faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the Lord, who has rightly taught us that all our works done without charity are worth nothing, and that without charity all who live are counted dead before him, would send his Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace, together with all virtues, especially faith alone, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Faithful God, as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn is I Am Trusting Thee, Lord Jesus. For those of you not receiving communion today, you may certainly choose to end your worship after this hymn. You also may certainly continue to watch and join and worship with us if you so desire. We sing I Am Trusting Thee, Lord Jesus, Lutheran Service Book number 729, Stands as one through three and six. May your face shine upon your servants. Save us, O Lord, for your mercy's sake. Let us not be ashamed, O Lord, for we call upon you. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. 
Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. This do as often in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world, of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be made whole. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from my enemy. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, 
Preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen.
O Lord, restore us by this holy sacrament. Purify us from our old faults and make us partakers of the mystery of your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have given us your Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Grant us grace that we may always most thankfully receive his inestimable benefits and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O oh, for a faith that will not shrink, the Lutheran hymnal number 396. We'll sing stanzas 1, 3, 5, and 6. And following that hymn and my final prayers here at the altar, we will also have a postlude hymn. Now we sing our closing hymn, O oh, for a faith that will not shrink.
I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, which has enabled me, a poor sinner, to preach your word. And I beseech you, gracious and merciful God, to inscribe your word and seal it within our hearts. Grant that we may constantly grow in the knowledge and confession of your name. Let your word, which alone is and remains eternal truth, be spread and known among us and all people. Fulfill your promise that your word shall not return to you void. Let it stir us up and fall upon all people as the rain and snow from heaven fall upon the earth, that we may always know you, the true God and everlasting Father, and be enabled to worship and praise you in humble fear, and order all our ways according to your holy commandment. May we always be found loving and obedient children, and finally obtain the everlasting inheritance purchased for us at so great a cost by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today here at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd and the chapel at the Good Shepherd community, especially if you have remained throughout the whole communion distribution throughout the community until now. Uh, for a postlude hymn today, we sing, that's what it is, Oh, what a Savior that he died for me. God's blessings to you, and if you have been watching on Facebook, feel free to let us know. You joined us in the comments. We sing our last hymn of praise and thanksgiving to our God. 